morning guys welcome to episode 14 i told you you guys would get several videos today nudge nudge hint hint wink wink you guys are probably gonna get three no way me doing three videos in one day it's gonna take up all my afternoon to edit but that's okay another vehicle we're looking at today is the m44 howitzer motor carriage so this is a self-propelled artillery piece with that we're gonna get into the history of this vehicle and then we'll hop into the tour all right so hopping into the history of this vehicle uh not too much to say about this vehicle uh it was designed in the early 1950s just like uh with the last vehicle we looked at it was in around actually in service around the same time but and again it was too late to see the action of the korean war but entered service in 1954. so this howitzer entered service in 1954 and would serve on frontline units with uh serving as mobile artillery for like German uh, for defense on the border and stuff of Germany and you know, like Berlin all that good stuff um, they did not see action in Vietnam they were actually their service life service life was cut in 1963 by the US they were given out in like lend leasing programs to the British and to uh, the Turks actually who actually used them pretty well the only thing that they were used in was the Kurdish Turkish conflict which they had uh, M44 T's I believe the designation was that the uh, Turks used for it but um, early versions of this vehicle actually admitted uh, poisonous and noxious fumes. So that's why they went with the open, uh, open top concept for the tools to so get proper ventilation. You can see a 125 millimeter howitzer there, uh, which they could get proper ventilation from in there now. So that pretty much does it for the history of this vehicle, you guys. There's not much to say about it uh, other than it had a short service life and was used by the U.S. mainly just as war defense during the Cold War. So with that, we'll hop into the tour. All right, so hopping into the tour, um, what looks like the back of the vehicle is actually the front of the vehicle. <laughs> so the engine would actually be in the front now because this is a howitzer motor carriage. Right here, you have your front drive light, your blackout marker lights, and you actually see the exhaust port right here on the front. Your front fender's right here, so this is the 7th Army Training Command Headquarters Company, 7th Platoon Vehicle. Another exhaust port here, bush guards for your lights and blackout markers, tow pencil lugs, and all these hatches will be access to the engine compartment inside. Um, so since we're in the front of the vehicle, I'll tell you guys what kind so of engine. fun fact about this vehicle too, a little bit, this is actually based off the M41 Walker Bulldog chassis again. So I had the Continental AOS 450 horsepower engine, which could crank this baby up to probably 30, 30 miles an hour. If you wanted to push it, take off the speed cover, no fun switch, 35 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, probably say you get it up to. Also on the front, you have your uh, travel lock for the barrel. And down here, you actually have a big tow cable and storage for extra track links down here, which is something you don't see like too much on other vehicles. And you have your plate there, your extra towing lugs. But you see how thick that big steel cable is. It's all steel wired. So with that, you guys are in for a treat. We're gonna get inside this vehicle and show you guys. Let's go. So hopping inside the vehicle, you guys, uh, not necessarily a turret, but uh, where all your fighting will be done. We're inside your crew compartment right now. So right here, this would be your commander or the chief, which is chief of section of the howitzer. Right here, he's got a mount for the 50 cal right here. And it would be, this is actually on a pivot mount so it can swivel around. And these bolts, these, these here would actually be used to put up canvas or something if they wanted to cover and tar with a gun from the rain and the weather. Because as you can see, your breech is very exposed right here. So this is where your breech is. So this is a M114 155 millimeter howitzer. You can see the brakes there. Uh, you can see your spinning wheels, your elevation, your traverse wheels. And actually right over there is a spot for your gunner's sight. You see that there. And what's is really cool about this vehicle is you actually have some of the original seating positions. So right there is actually your driver's seat right there. You can see like the steering and his glass, uh, his like bulletproof glass right there or his bullet resistant glass because I don't think they had bulletproof glass back then. That's where it'd be, and it actually has, if we get over there and film it, we'll take, uh, we'll get you guys a better look, but there's a transmission shift lever actually right there. Over there would be your gunner seat. So you can see he's got his elevating and traverse wheels. And in front of him would actually be the radio box. So that's where the radio would be. Uh, 
where I'm sitting, right here, you can see, actually this would be the spot for your shells. This is where your ammo would be stored and your powders. And this is just like the back of the vehicle where, uh, we really kind of like the back of the compartment where other crew members sit. So this vehicle had a crew of five. So you got your commander slash chief right here, driver, uh, gunner, and then you had two loaders. So one would stand on this side, have his seat here. Another would stand on that side and have his seat. So this would have a crew of five. So once you got some more shots of inside of the vehicle, and uh, we'll actually, uh, we'll go and do that right now. Let's go. So, so this is what I was talking about earlier, you guys. Right here is actually your shift lever right there. And there's a spot for a flashlight, obviously marked by flashlight. Your driver's window and his compartment right there. Back here where the commander is. What's up, Mr. Cameraman? And I'm actually standing where the loader would stand. And this is where he would open and close the breech and fire the gun. Looking out that way. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Then over here, oh man, somebody's smoking up here. That's not good. You guys will see the radio box and the compartment for your gunner. With that, we'll hop into the side of the vehicle. Here's actually a data plate for the mount of the howitzer on the gun. This big, beautiful 155 millimeter cannon. And some church bells in the background. You guys, that is what our next video is going to be on over there, is on another self-propelled artillery piece. All right, we're going to get into the side of this video, you guys. We're dilly-dallying because we're being nerds and hanging out up in the turret up here. So, let's go. All right, welcome back, you guys. We're getting into the side of the vehicle now. Sorry, we were geeking out up inside that thing. Um, so, as you can see, your suspension is kind of based off the uh, Walker Bulldog and the M47 patent style tanks. Um, you have your support wheels up here, your regular road wheels, your back support wheel, and your front drive pocket. Right here. So you have your exhaust port right here. As we looked at earlier on the front of the vehicle, that's where your exhaust would come out. You got a stowage box and bustles right here. You can put extra things in there. There's more ventilation for the exhaust. Extra track links. This thing had a, actually a lot of extra track links on it. Stowage boxes. Um, you can probably use this to set up a tarp or hook some stuff to the side. And then, you, like I said earlier, you have your, uh, your mounts up there for putting like a canvas over top of the crew if they wanted to keep the breech dry or keep themselves dry. Had a torsion bar suspension system, as you guys can see down in there. You have regular track links just like any other vehicle. And that pretty much does it, you guys. That's the side of the vehicle. With that, we're gonna swing around and get into the back. So hopping into the back of the vehicle, guys, you got your rear backup marker lights here with your blackout markers, your rear lights, same fender markings as the front, tow pencil, the big baby, the big spade right here. So this will be used to dig in as they fired or dug in by the crew to help uh, with the recoil of the howitzer. You have a spot for a pioneer kit, which will be your picks, rakes, shovels, all that good stuff, and an ax, an extra mount for it, or tracks, whatever they want to put up here. Like I said, these mounts are for the canvas that will be put on top if they want to have a canvas. And uh, just your rear fenders here, and it does have a toe pencil just like all the others. And they, here's actually the straps are still intact for the pioneer kit. And just like on today's vehicles, it actually has an electric charging port. Look at that. You guys see that on similar vehicles today. So there'll be some form of electricity throw, flowing through this vehicle. So with that, we're going to hop around and get into the closeout of this video, you guys. Fire mission just came in. We got to move.
This is going to feature a lot in today's video. But, uh, thank you guys for tuning in this one. This was really cool that we got to get inside and show you this vehicle. So with that, we thank you for tuning in.